Hey guys, it's me, Muddy, with the Whiteboard Academy. I hope you're doing well. Coming to you today with a short video on my top five tips for looking good in online meetings. Here we go. So I'm coming to you today from my digital studio and I have my document camera set up with some cards that I've prepared and those cards are showing on a TV screen right over my shoulder. I'm gonna share with you today my top five tips and they're gonna go in this order. Your system, your lighting, your audio, your space, and then finally, even though it's often the first thing we think of, it's actually the least out of these five is how to improve your video. The first area is to optimize your system. And here's what that means. When you're in an online meeting, it takes a lot of resources to be able to send and receive live video. So we'd want you to close programs that you're not using and limit internet bandwidth except for that meeting. Try and concentrate those resources. So a few hours before the meeting, it's a good idea to restart your system. I wouldn't do it right before the meeting in case there's an update or something that has to happen. You'd hate to be surprised right before the meeting, but a few hours before the meeting, restart your system. That'll kind of refresh a lot of things that are happening in the background. Close other tabs or programs or, that you're not using during the meeting and ask other people in the household to limit their internet use while you are presenting or while you're on the meeting. So that's the first one, to optimize your system. The next area is to improve your lighting. If you think about it, cameras and webcams capture light. So the better lighting and the better quality lighting, the better you're gonna look on camera. So when we think about lighting for online meetings, there's really three areas I want you to think about. I want you to have enough light, I want the light to be coming from the right direction, and I want the light to be nice, soft lighting. So here's what that means, enough light. Webcams have very small sensors and they really don't do a great job in low light conditions for the most part. So all things being equal, we want you to be in a well-lit place. Now we want the light to be coming from the right direction as well, which ideally is in front of you or just a little bit off to the sides. We want to avoid bright light right behind you, like a sitting in front of a brightly lit window. That's called backlighting and it's a really tricky situation for the camera to pick, pick up. It's gonna make you look kind of like a silhouette against a really bright background. The best case is that the light is coming from the front or about 45 degrees from either side off the front. So that's kind of what this diagram shows is kind of 45 degrees. This is the place where you want the light to be coming towards you to help light you from the front. Be careful about overhead lighting. A lot of us have overhead lights in our rooms, but if we have overhead light coming straight down, that can create kind of harsh shadows right under our eyes. So a lot of times it's best to not have the overhead lights on and instead have a lamp in front of you. So the third area around lighting has to do with the quality of light. When we talk about that, we talk about soft lighting versus like harsh or direct lighting. So daylight is about the best quality light you can get. So right, best case scenario is you have a window right in front of you with some nice natural lighting, uh, daylight. However, you want that to come through something to help filter that light or soften that light, right? So like some, some uh, curtains, you know, some sheer curtains or something that help filter that light. And if, if you think about it, if you're outside in the harsh direct sunlight, it can create harsh shadows. But if you're, if you're under a tree or under some branches that are helping to kind of filter the light, it helps make that light more natural and soft. And that's the same kind of thing that we're doing by filtering the light through curtains. Now, if you don't have that situation, just using a lamp or you can get a like a ring light. A lot of times people will use ring lights for online video. Having those at about a 45 degree angle over and about a 45 degree angle up, especially if you wear glasses, you can see the reflection of the light in my glasses if I look at it, but when I'm looking straight ahead, because my lights are up at a 45 degree angle, it's not as, doesn't create as much of a reflection on my glasses. So those are the tips as it comes to lighting. You've got enough light, you've got it coming from the right direction, and it's nice, soft lighting. 
The next tip has to do with boosting your audio, improving your audio during the meeting. And so what we recommend, it's both what you hear and how others hear you. Okay, so the main thing we recommend is that you use headphones or earbuds. And that does a couple of things. Number one, it helps you focus on the meeting because it helps isolate the meeting from other ambient sounds around you. So it actually helps you hear the meeting better because your sound is kind of more focused on the meeting. It also helps prevent an audio loop. So if you're just using your speakers, the sound can come out of your speakers and your mic can pick up that sound. And so it can create a little bit of an audio feedback, which if you've ever been in that situation where you're hearing this echo or feedback, you know it's tough <laughs> to listen to. So you wanna avoid audio feedback as much as you can and using headphones will help you do that. The other thing is you want to make sure that you sound as good as you can, that others can hear you. And that has to do with your microphone. Using earbuds that have an integrated microphone can help with that because they have a microphone right on them that will be closer to your mouth than your computer would. Also make sure in your meeting software like Zoom that you have the right microphone selected. That can make a big difference. The next tip has to do with space. And that's two parts. That's the space where you are seated and where your computer is, but also the space behind you, kind of your backdrop or the view into the room. So first of all, the space where you are seated, where you're working, we absolutely recommend that you remove the clutter and you have kind of a nice clear space to work because it helps you be more present, more centered, more grounded. So removing that clutter from the desk where you're working or where you're seated now, if you're presenting, you may want to have your speaker notes or a printout of your slides, which help give you the confidence to know no matter what happens with technology, at least I have my slides and I'll be able to present. Also, consider your backdrop, what people see when they look at your camera, because this little window, your webcam, gives us a view into your room and that has a big impact on our experience of how you show up in the meeting. So likewise, you wanna make sure that it's free of clutter or that it's intentional or that it supports and not detracts or distracts from what you're saying. The fifth tip is about how to enhance your video. Here's the main idea. You want your camera to be about at eye level, right? So when I'm looking out at you, I'm at eye level. A lot of times, if you have your laptop on your desk, People are looking up at you. They can see the ceiling. They can see the light or the ceiling fan. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. That may mean putting your camera up on a cardboard box or somehow raising your laptop up so the, the camera is about eye level. Now you can also do this with a external webcam, right? Like a little USB webcam. Typically, a USB webcam is going to be a better camera than what the built-in camera on your computer. Likewise, if you are connected to the meeting with a, a smartphone or a device, that can usually be a pretty good camera as well. Although it can be difficult to experience and watch the meeting on a phone, it can actually look pretty good if you're presenting on a phone. So just something to consider, and it may be worth testing uh, before the meeting. Boom, huh, there we go. That's our top five tips for how to look good in online meetings. So if you're presenting, if you're speaking, you're just showing up in an online meeting. These tips will help you show up in a professional way. I hope this video was useful, that you found some tidbits in there that will help you in your next online meeting. If so, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up, which helps other people see the video so we can help more people unlock awesome. Cheers.